just like Mark said, my name is Andrew. That's my first Zen ever, so and it's going awesome so far. So I hope you guys are having a great time too. I'm um, just a little bit about me and like where I come from and you know how I was raised. Uh, I'm the oldest of five kids. I have a very Catholic, like spiritual family. Uh, both my parents went to Steubenville, and so our whole life, like you know, we went to church every Sunday, and you know we went on certain retreats and we prayed all the time and. You know, we said the rosary in the morning and stuff like that. So, you know, I have a very, very strong background uh, for my, my faith. Uh, and I just started getting older and, and going through, you know, getting into high school, um, you know, being exposed to different things. Um, you know, nothing really ever went wrong, like, in my life. So I kind of just, like, took God for granted and just didn't ever think about God because I never had to really depend on him or rely on him. I never even really thanked him really for like how, how good I had it for a long time. And so I kind of never really learned how to rely on God like my parents had always you know, taught me. And I kind of, I never had to do it. So I just, you know, pushed that by the wayside. So as I got older and getting closer to high, like end of high school, I started getting, uh, you know, involved in some different things like, you know, start going to more parties and start, you know, just trying to get, I was getting away from my faith a lot. And... I thought I developed this bad habit where I had God in like a completely separate compartment in my life than what I was doing like on a regular basis. It's like, I'd, yeah, I would go to church every Sunday with my family and we pray and like that was great. You know, I didn't get really anything out of mass or prayer or anything. I just had, that was a part of my life and but I didn't really care about it. And I had this more, this more fun part of my life that I was getting into that, you know, I spent more energy and time in. And you know, this, this habit just kept getting worse and worse. And so I went away to college after I graduated mm -hmm. high school. And I was so excited to get away and like get out of, you know, my house because I wanted to just go be on my own. And, you know, being in a huge family, just crazy all the time. You can never do what you want. And I was like, I'm going out of here. I'm going to go like to an awesome school and I'm going to go, you know, party and get an awesome degree. And so I was so excited to go to college. I went like right I went to that first summer session that Penn State had right after high school. So I had like two weeks after graduating and I was gone. I couldn't wait to get out. So, um, and that summer Penn State was ranked the number one party school in the country. And there's this crazy, like college just had this crazy culture where it's like, what you do is you like work hard all day and then you go out like every night and you just party all the time and you just do whatever you want to do, there's no rules. So I became really desensitized to like everything that I was raised, you know, like, you know, respecting your sexuality and other people's sexualities and um, just everything. I just didn't care about anything. I really did. I, if I hurt anybody, I didn't care. If I hurt myself, I didn't care. I just was focused on me. And so, you know, I really got caught up in the party scene and then that led to getting involved in the college hookup scene, which is very real. And it's just like everyone had this mentality that it's just what you do. So there were, I pretty much for like three years from like my freshman year in college all the way up to my junior year, all I cared about doing was, you know, doing good in school and then like, how, like where can I go party and like who can I try and bring back home to like, you know, like make out with or even like have sex with, like that's, that's what I did. And that's what, you know, was kind of encouraged to do there. And I just totally lost, like, I was very lost. And, and I would still go to church, which is the crazy thing. You'd think that I would get like, you know, any kind of clue, but I didn't. You know, because it was still part of that. It was still compartmentalized in a totally different spot. Like I was a different person when I went to church and I was, I was being somebody else when I was out of church. And so, I mean, I did it for years and years. I built up this crazy habit. And my brick wall between God was higher than this. I mean, I couldn't even see into the other room where God was. And um, one day, I remember, I was, just, I was walking to class, and I found out that one of the girls that I had, like, you know, had a quick relationship with was really, really negatively affected by what I did to her. Um, she was really hurt, so she trusted me, and uh, I just totally disrespected her. I, I had no respect for her sexuality at all, or mine, and she trusted me, and, you know, I failed her, you know, I, you know, we did things that obviously shouldn't do unless you're married. 
And I found out that she was just crushed by this. And it was a serious wake up call to me. Cause like, you know, she was really cool and I thought that like we had like a, you know, kind of like a just with just friends kind of thing going on. And I didn't realize like what I was doing to her. And then that made me realize what I had done to everybody else that like have come through my life in the past three years. And it's like, who, who the heck am I that I'm crushing these people, like I'm not even caring, like I'm not even at all, didn't care about them at all. And so that was like a serious wake up call for me and I was really, really like bothered and disturbed and like, like what, what did I become? So um, I, went to, I went to church a lot and I went that next Sunday after I had that, you know, this like this kind of like a pause in my life, like I need to reevaluate everything about me. Um, and I went to church and they were like, hey, we're having confession next Tuesday and Wednesday, so we'd love if you guys come by and you know, it'd be great to see you. And I was like, perfect, like what are the odds that there's no better way for me to start like over again and, and get refocused than by just like unloading everything that I had built up. So I was like, I gotta go as quick as possible. So the Tuesday comes around and there's confession that night and I totally forgot about it. <clears throat> so it was not the best start. <laughs> um, and then I was like, no, later that night, I was like, oh, I forgot. So then I went the next day, and I guess not a lot of people go to confession there because I was the only one sitting in the church. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy, the priest was like 20 some minutes late, so I was like, <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> so he called me back, and since there was nobody there, we just went back into this small little like, confessional room. And we just, it, was, it was like unlike any confession I ever had. Like when I was in high school, like we'd go like you know every month in high school and be like, I didn't really do that many bad things in high school. So I was like, yeah, it's a lot of my parents, whatever, like the routine, you know. And it was just like I didn't really get a whole lot out of it because I thought that confession was just kind of like, oh, I'm just gonna like unload my baggage here and then just go and that's it. And I always end up getting a priest that I knew, like. And, like there, there could be a thousand priests there, and I would be the one that I knew every time. And he was like my principal, so I was like, I can't say like everything, because then he's gonna know what's going on in our school. But he can't say anything, but he's gonna know. And I don't know. It was weird. <laughs> but um, so it was like unlike any confession I've ever had, because we just had a conversation for like probably an hour, because no one else showed up. He kept checking and he kept coming back. <laughs> and I was like, hey, you're not gonna like do anything, are you? I was like, no. So he'd come back. And he was an awesome guy. And so um, we just talked for a long time about everything that I had going on and what I had been doing and, and why and, and things like that. And so we just, you know, read different Bible passages together about forgiveness and, and people, and he gave me like examples of people who had like restarted their faith in their lives and who had done worse things, like they, who had murdered people and come back to be, become saints, you know, after a, like some radical conversions. So that was, it was just, yeah, I knew those stories already, but it was really cool to like be able to relate to some of those people and it was a really opening experience for me. And I'll never forget, he told me, he was like, Andrew, like, confession isn't just, like, you coming here to tell me everything you did wrong and just, like, leave. Like, you need to come here not only to confess your sins and do it all, but in the sacrament, you receive God's grace to go forward and help fight the battles that you're up against. Like, especially in today's world, where I feel like they're, like, inventing new ways to sin even easier. It's like so, you don't even have to try to sin, it's just like boom, it's like right there. It's, it's just ridiculous what like our society is going through right now, and man, it's so hard to be like a teenager, or even, even me today still, and I'm sure it's never going to get easier no matter how old I get. Uh, we need, we need like, our, like God's grace, his armor to protect us from what's going on, and that's, that's something that is just like so, pow was so powerful to me. I never even thought about it that way. I never even knew that, really. And it's like it, it's just incredible, because sin is just, one way I look at sin, it's kind of like, throw, like we have these rocks, right? We have these, imagine like if you, if you I don't know if you ever went out in like mischief night or anything, but if you threw a rock through a window and like shattered somebody's window, it's like, kind of like, what's, like it's kind of like sinning. You throw a rock through the window, you do something wrong, 
you get this crazy like rush from it and it's awesome and you run away and you're like, oh my god, I can't believe we did that, that was so cool. <laughs> but you have no idea like, what kind of impact that you just had on that other person. Like you think that it's just like when you sin, you're just hurting yourself. But you're never just hurting yourself when you sin. Um, like if you, that could be someone's house. Like you could have broken their window. There could have been kids in the house that they no longer feel safe anymore because of what you did. You, you stole their sense of security from that family. There could have been something else inside of that house that broke that, carried so much value to the family that you just destroyed. You have no idea what kind of ripple effect that your sin has. It's not just you. And that, it's like, I just thought that was an interesting way of looking at it. And so like after we had a conversation with the priest, uh, you know, he, it was probably the best confession I ever had. And it was amazing, because it was the very first confession that I had that I actually like, had something to say that was like real, like deep, that wasn't just like lying to you. I, like obviously, I'm not trying to say that, you know, sins aren't real, like smaller ones. But like that was the very first time that I left and I was like, oh, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm 100 pounds lighter. Because I hadn't gone for like four years before that. Like I didn't even know you had to go every year, I had no idea. And um, so, but, it's just crazy, like what we're, what we're dealing, what we're up against today, and God understands that. You know, Jesus was a human; like God sent His Son down here to die for our sins, and God, uh, Jesus hung out with humans every day. He was a hundred percent human, and He was divine, so He knows exactly what we're going through, and He knows it's not easy, and that's why God gave us the sacrament. The sacrament is. Like, God, having a sacrament for that reason is, is awesome. Like, God knows that we're going to screw up. So he gave us a gift to be able to come clean of that and admit our guilt and to be absolved from it. And that's, it's just awesome. And, like, I, I definitely don't take advantage of it of enough. It's, it's a sacrament of healing. So, like, being able to go in there and be healed by God, like, it's that, having a gift like that is just like something I take for granted all the time. Um, but we got, and when you go to confession, like we're you know we're carrying a lot of stuff, and you're gonna get a chance to you know go today, and you're gonna have your stone, you're gonna have your, whatever you're gonna be carrying your bricks, you're gonna be carrying your all that weight with you. Just God wants us to come with all of that, and just be completely. Ourself, come as you are and just give everything up to God. Place all your burdens, place all your sins at his feet and he'll take it from you and heal you completely. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. If you're struggling with like, addic addictions to you know, drugs or you know, if porn is a huge part of your life, then like, bring that to God. And if you're, if you're like me and you, dealt, uh, you had a hard time like, dealing with relationships or you were like, hurting other people, God wants to heal you from all these things that you're dealing with. So he just wants you to come, just be real, you know, and just be yourself. Give it up to God, and he wants to crush this wall. He wants to come in and just blow this wall up so he can be with you and heal you. Um, you're going to, like, God's going to be, we're going to be in God's presence tonight. And you don't want to have a wall up when God wants to come and he's going to be knocking on, our, on all of our doors tonight and you just got to let him in. And he can't get to your door if there's a giant wall in front of it. So you just got to come before him and let him crush your wall to you know, and let him heal you for tonight.